Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at the burial of Jesus and I'm going to read uh, Matthew's account of that from chapter 27 first of all. So I'm just reading from Matthew 27 verse 55 to the end of the chapter. Um, Matthew tells us the story like this. At the end of the crucifixion, many women were there watching from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. The next day, the one after preparation day, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate. Sir, they said, we remember that while he was still alive, that deceiver said, After three days, I will rise again. So give the order for the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may come and steal the body and tell the people that he's been raised from the dead. This last deception will be worse than the first. Take a guard, Pilate answered. Go make the tomb as secure as you know how. So they went and made the tomb secure by putting a seal on the stone and posting the guard. Yeah. yeah, at first glance, I kind of thought this is the short straw, right? Because if, you, if you're doing the talk about the crucifixion, you can talk about the wonderful things that were being won for us as Jesus was sacrificed on the cross. If you're doing the talk about the resurrection, you can talk about more things, the wonderful things that are won for us as Jesus triumphed over death. Uh, but this day in between, It's kind of a difficult one, isn't it? And often, perhaps as Christians, we want to rush past it and get to Sunday quickly. Um, Because there's a little bit of something a bit uncomfortable about the fact that, you know, this day that Jesus is in the tomb. um, How do we cope with it? Well, I think if we look at some of the main characters in that passage, I think there's a couple of things that are that hopefully they help me and I just hope they help you as you listen to this and just think and pray about this today as, as we go through the day. The first thing is is Joseph of Arimathea. It's interesting to me that we don't hear about him before in, in the Gospels um, uh, and yet he's the one disciple who is around at this point in time. All the others have fled uh, and yet here's Joseph and uh, he, he plucks up the courage to go to, to Pilate, the Roman governor, and get Jesus' body uh, and lay it down in his own tomb. So he was a wealthy guy who would have had his own tomb cut in the rocks. And so he takes Jesus' body. Imagine that being the one who takes the son of God's lifeless body and goes and lays it in his own tomb and then puts it, rolls this stone in front of it to, to cover it. Um, so, so there's Joseph, uh, and, and then there's the, the Pharisees, uh, and, and what's really interesting, I think, is the Pharisees, is, is how Matthew has recorded what they've done. So the Pharisees admit that they're worried about Jesus, and that they call him a deceiver, and in their worry that they remember that he said he would rise three days um, after he died. So in order to prevent, prevent the disciples stealing the body, they ask Pilate to post a guard in front. So they go to the tomb themselves and they seal the to- the stone that Joseph had rolled in front. And then they post this guard, this number of Roman soldiers in front. And I, and I, kind, of, I kind of love the irony that they're worried about the pretense of Jesus rising from the dead. And so by their very actions, they kind of reinforce the fact that as Jesus appears later, the only way that could have happened is if he genuinely has risen from the dead because the stone was sealed and Roman guards have been put there to guard the tomb. Uh, and there's almost a, a lovely irony about that, I just think, in, in the story. Um, and then there's the ladies, you know, and, you know, it's really, it is obvious, isn't it? The men have all run off and are hiding. And yet these ladies watch at a distance the crucifixion and, and then they're watching 
the tomb as Joseph lays Jesus' body in the tomb and rolls the stone in front. We, we just read they're sat there watching. And I kind of wonder what, you know, what, what's going through their heads. Matthew doesn't tell us what they were thinking about. Matthew doesn't tell us, you know, did they have a conversation with Joseph about it? There's nothing recorded other than the fact they were just there watching. And yet, obviously, they may play such a key role in the account of the end of the crucifixion, the burial, and then what's going to happen the next day. Uh, but you just got to put your mind in there at, at that point in time. You know, Jesus was dead. Everything he taught about, what's going on? Everything he said, he said things like, I'm the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth and the life. He promised the coming of God's kingdom. And yet here he is. He's dead. And, and we're watching him being laid in a tomb. You know, uh, uh, And sometimes, you know, we all go through trauma in life don't we that that you've just got to kind of sit there and process it at times there's no obvious answers you're kind of wondering what's going on and and maybe that's what these two ladies were doing maybe they just sat there processing what's happening you know without rushing to any conclusions uh, and just thinking about it and uh, and wondering what's going on and of course we know what happens is they're concerned the following day to come back and, and treat his, 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 um, his dead body. And then there's Jesus himself. And I think, you know, this is possibly the greatest, you know, encouragement I, I find for, for you and for me, which is a bit of a strange thing, right? But, but Jesus alone, dead, in the tomb, in that dark place, no, no one with him. No one helping him, no friends, no disciples, no nothing. And, and, and it's a very dark sort of picture. But actually, in some strange way, it's really encouraging because it, it, it tells us how Jesus himself can identify with the dark things that you and I go through in our lives from time to time. That no matter how, um, how depressed we may get or how how much heartache we might be going through or how much darkness we go through in our own lives. Jesus can identify with that. He's been there. He knows what it's like. And, you know, sometimes things are, are desperate, aren't they, you know, outside of us uh, and things that are happening to us can make us feel really down. But sometimes even internally in how we think about things ourselves and just of ourselves, we can get to a dark place. And I think, you know, here's Jesus in that dark place and now so able to identify, so able to come alongside you and me when we go through those dark and difficult and challenging times. So I think, you know, as I look at this passage, I think, wow, you know, there's a lot I don't understand. In some ways, I, I'm like I'm like the ladies, I would just be looking at it thinking, you know, what's going on? But in some ways, when I think about Jesus, I think, wow, Lord, thank you. Even here, you, you empathise with us. Even in this place, you show yourself as the one who tempted in every way as we were, yet is without sin. Lord, we just thank you. Let's just pray, shall we? Father, I just thank you for Matthew's account. Thank you, Lord, for... Um, it, it's such a challenge when we read these passages, Lord. We do want to rush on to the next day. We do want to rush on to, you know, celebrating your life. But also, Lord Jesus, I do want to thank you. That you, and you can identify with everything that we go through, Lord. It's not a glib statement. But you've been in that place of, of loneliness, of darkness, of being on your own, and of triumph. Lord, and we thank you for that. And Lord, so you can come alongside. Thank you, Lord, you are the one who comes alongside us today. And Lord, I just want to pray for anyone listening or watching this who, who may feel themselves in that dark place, that they may see something of you here, Lord Jesus, and hear your voice saying, you know, you understand, you've been there. Lord, we thank you in your great name. Amen. <laughs>